G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself. So, where's Elbow? He's still out of the country as usual. I mean, that seems to be the thing at the moment, isn't it? I guess eventually he's going to pay a visit to Australia at some point in time. But, you know, he's out there jet-setting around and making sure that he's shaking hands with all of those globalist-controlled Muppets that, uh, you know, we know are ruining the whole planet. But, when are we going to see him return and start solving some of the problems here at home? Because he's laying claim to solving all the problems around the world and, you know, with climate change and all of these sorts of things. And uh, him and Tanya Plibersek, of course, you know, out there, you know, singing their own praises because they've done such wonderful things. Which, uh, you know, it's pretty easy just to go out there and say that you're going to do stuff, um, but you never actually do anything, right? I mean, we saw that in the federal election with the, the plan, you know, all of the plans that uh, Labor told us we were going to see because... You know, they cared about health care and they cared about AIDS care and they cared about child care. And we're not seeing anything happening with those things, of course. But, um, you yeah, know, they just tell everybody that they're going to do stuff and uh, you know, it seems to be everybody believes it. But to me, what it seems like is what is occurring over in Europe right now with Anthony Albanese is that he is just over there affirming that he's on board with everything they're doing. Um, you know, we've got this 43% um, reduction in carbon supposedly to occur which is going to, you know, cause a lot of problems for Australia because we've got nothing to replace all of this destruction that's going to occur to achieve those goals, of course. Um, you know, there is, uh, against nuclear power, it's amazing how far they're willing to go to discredit nuclear power, even though all the countries that they are over there, you know, sucking up to have nuclear power, and that's one of the ways they have reduced their carbon footprints and all of these types of things and brought about uh, zero net, and, you know, they're trying to achieve zero net, of course. But we've seen recently, you know, especially countries like Germany who are putting coal-fired power plants back online because they can't supply enough power. And uh, they're not even in winter at the moment. So what happens in, in Europe once um, the real cold comes in and they can't supply power, they're going to have to you know, burn away all that coal just as usual. But, you know, uh, Albanese is saying that he's got all these trade agreements going on uh, with the European Union which I guess, might sound good on the surface, but they do come with conditions, and that is if Australia doesn't meet these targets and these uh, promises of, you know, um, zero net and uh, you know, all those sorts of things that comes along with uh, the bogus climate change uh, committee, um, then there will be sanctions or they will restrict these trades. So, you know, essentially what it will come down to is that you, the European Union will be controlling the trade agreement, and uh, if Australia doesn't comply, they will switch the tap off and you know, it's just another way that Australia is being sold out, of course, because we don't have any control over things that we do because uh, we're sold out right from the beginning in the deals. And Albanese is doing exactly that. But so far, he's achieved absolutely nothing in this country, as much as Labor and their supporters would like us all to believe. Now, for those people out there who will say that I'm a liberal shill and all this type of stuff, I didn't like Morrison, didn't vote for Morrison, didn't support Morrison or the Morrison government in any way. Um, I don't particularly agree with the left-right paradigm at all. They're all, you know, a bunch of monkeys that are running around singing the same tune anyway. But uh, I won't stop me, you know, that won't stop me from pointing out the fact that these people are doing these things. Now, as I say, Albanese has done absolutely nothing for the country. He seems to be hiding from any real responsibility. The only thing that we have seen come through, um, you know, as far as it goes with domestic issues, is this uh, reducing of staffers for the crossbenchers. And that really, uh, you know, I really do wonder if um, that's not another tactic as well. Um, so that when they try to push through so-called changes, that they can blame the crossbenchers for not supporting them with it. And uh, this, you know, nothing really ever happens and these things don't get done. Um, so it's like they're creating a scapegoat um, because, you know, the, the crossbenchers have already said that they're going to block um, new policy and bills and things like that because they're not happy about having their staff cut um, and I expect you know they should be unhappy about it because no doubt it is quite hard to keep a track of everything that the government is pushing through. Malcolm Roberts had a video out recently showing all the paperwork that they have to go through and obviously you know one person can't go through all of that stuff but you know there's always a tactic or a ploy or something they're up to when they do these things they certainly didn't cut their own staffing, um, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, as I say, if Labor is out there trying to create a situation where they can blame other people for things not happening like they said they would happen. Now, there's also the fact that Labor did say that they were going to reduce the cost of living and they were going to reduce power costs, 
which you know has completely not happened and uh, no plan has been shown although we have seen uh, you know labor come out and tell us that we'll have to accept this um, inflation that we've been seeing and that is going to get a lot worse before the end of the year um, and uh, before it gets better they say but obviously they've got no real plan to stop these things happening and this is why we see the banks starting to step in and uh, put things like interest rates up interest rates have gone up really quite rapidly over one percent increase just today or i think it was yesterday or today um, over one percent increase in mortgage rates so they're starting to screw uh, the thumbs down on people when it comes to their mortgages and this is quite a significant amount you're looking at about a five percent interest rate on a uh, fixed mortgage at the moment uh, between five and six percent it is so uh, one year is about five percent and three years is about six percent and that's a significant increase. I mean, 18 months uh, to two years ago, you were looking at a 2% uh, three-year fixed interest rate on most loans, and uh, now it's tripled. And that's just in the last couple of years. So, you know, people who got a mortgage 12 months ago, or 18 months ago, or two years ago even, um, they, they are going to be coming out of that fixed interest rate of about 2% uh, and slap straight in the face with a potential 6% if they want to go for another fixed three, uh, three years. Now the variable rate is uh, significantly low, it's about 3%, um, but it, again it's still quite high and the problem with variable rates as most of you know is that they are variable and they can go up through the roof at any point in time. So we're seeing interest rates really starting to you know, increase rapidly which is going to put a huge amount of stress on our finances. And the cost of living is continuing to rise. We're seeing that with petrol now in September. We're obviously going to see the tax returned back onto uh, fuel. So we can see a good 25 cents being slapped on there. And it is uh, well over $2.10 a litre still right now. Uh, so we're just going to have to get used to that as well. So again, Labor's got nothing in the pipeline to stop any of these happening. Um, it, it is all just a, a case of that we are going to be sold out as usual. And if we are to meet these so-called climate targets and all of these sorts of things, it's only going to get much more expensive. We're also seeing here in Queensland that they want to increase the tariffs and the royalties on uh, mining of coal and gas and this type of stuff because, you know, that's what Labor always does is continue to tax uh, when they're not producing any kind of security for energy here at all. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same in other states as well. But, um, you know, I'm no uh, economist and um, I don't claim to be, but uh, to me it would be a much better idea to actually create a system where uh, tariffs or uh, taxes were reduced on coal and uh, that way they would have to be then um, supplying free, if not almost free, um, coal or, or gas to the, uh, you know, domestic market here in Australia so that we could secure our power. Um, if the power companies were being supplied with um, coal and gas for free, they simply wouldn't have to you know, raise the cost so rapidly and it wouldn't be susceptible to international markets. You know, gas and coal could still be sold out into the world on market, you know, world market rates, um, but uh, domestic uh, supply of power uh, could be assured. Obviously, you know, it'd have to be drawn up and a lot more technical than that but it's an idea um, to secure power supply for Australians you know and this is really very important but none of that's ever being looked at it's just more taxes more taxes and the more they tax it the more you know the prices of it increase and it's just a, you know another inflationary tactic and there's also the fact that the, uh, the federal government is saying that they're going to uh, hand out more money when it comes to family tax benefits um, there's going to be an increase on that, so there's more money being dished out and shelled out. And uh, one of the main problems has been that there's been hundreds of billions of dollars injected into our economy, and this is why the economy's going the way it is. Um, you know, it's kept afloat by all of this artificial currency that's being injected into it, no doubt, um, and which is causing the inflation. Uh, so obviously if you keep pumping more money into it, yes, you will keep the economy afloat, however inflation will continue along the way. Now there's also that uh, Australia has received a triple A credit rating, uh, which might seem good on the surface, but you know, again, Albanese has been complying to the globalists and uh, going along with everything they want him to do. So that perhaps may be his reward. He can't exactly take uh, you know credit for Australia's uh, triple A credit rating and the economy by any means. He doesn't want to take uh, uh, responsibility for all of the things that are causing the problems in Australia. So there's no way he can possibly take credit 
uh, for our good uh, or strong economy. But as I've said, you know, our strong economy is based simply on the fact that we've been injecting gigantic amounts of money into it. And when you stop injecting that money, obviously the economy is going to start to falter. But the list of things that are going wrong here in Australia at the moment uh, is just growing every day. We're seeing shortages of workers. Uh, you know, we've seen this teacher strikes and this type of stuff. And they're saying there's a shortage of workers in aged care and on and on it goes. And that there's supposedly you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs that are not being filled. And uh, the answer is that we import people again. So, uh, you know, there's another problem right there. Uh, we're going to bring in uh, people from overseas to fill jobs here in Australia and uh, we know that a lot of the pressures that have been put on uh, jobs here in Australia has been the fact that people didn't want to comply with the mandates that were being forced down our throats and uh, they've chosen to leave that profession as you know, whatever it may have been and uh, you know, find something else and they're not willing to go back into that previous profession. So we've got a shortage of things like nurses and teachers and aged care workers and uh, child care workers and this type of stuff but it's not just limited to that um, it's it's across all sectors and all industries where there's a shortage of people because they were not willing to comply to the mandates so they you know the governments have started to say that they think they should fill these positions with uh, overseas workers which in turn is going to put more pressure uh, on our housing sector that is already exploding and bursting at the seams there's been talk that the housing sector is starting to decrease in value and you know, drop in price for houses, um, but that's not in, you know, in any way going to increase the number of houses available. Uh, that is for sure. If you start bringing in migrant workers uh, to fill jobs, then you're going to increase the problem on the low income uh, sector when it comes to rental properties, because these people aren't going to walk in the country and buy a house by any means. They're going to go straight into the rental sector, and as we've seen here in Queensland, there's uh, you know tens of thousands of people struggling to get basic accommodation, and uh, it's causing them to do all sorts of radical moves, and uh, you know people living in their cars and tents and things like this just to, to get through. But you know the government is again not doing anything to uh, curb these problems. We're just seeing more and more of the same of what's been occurring over the last few years more reckless spending. Here in Queensland, they're talking about spending another $25 billion, uh, supposedly on schools and medical facilities that they probably won't be able to staff unless they bring in people from overseas, of course. Uh, so we're going to have, you know, all sorts of problems there. So, uh, but, you know, we're not really taking care of the real problems, which is the cost of living in Australia is uh, breaking people's uh, budgets and breaking people's lives. And, uh, one of the biggest stresses on any marriage and family has always been uh, finances and uh, it, it is one of the greatest factors that causes the most stress in a family and a marriage and causes divorces and things like that is financial hardship and uh, you know perhaps this is just another tactic to break the family unit but this is the state of Australia right now and all we're getting is two-faced Tony Albanese uh, flying around the world telling everybody how wonderful he is.